Travis Telephone Impatience Limited and the products mainly is based on uh, radio uh, systems. So um, please feel free to ask any questions or whatever, any observations. I think Dr. Evo would be most pleased oh, yes. uh -huh. to attend to all our. Uh, so, over to you, Dr. Okay. Thank you. Yes, how long is the presentation? Um, I don't think we've got the slides. What's uh, all the time? That's it, 30 to 45 minutes. And depending on the questions. Yeah. Right. What, what this presentation is about is uh, this application of emerging uh, security technologies. In the last uh, sphere, area. So a lot of the telephone discussions and conversations are being made now, services are are no longer signals, but they are packets. So even the major telcos have moved towards wireless uh, and service delivery over the internet. Um, at the same time, very fortuitously probably, uh, we had 9-11 in the US. So there's been um, a, a resurgence, a resurgence, if you will, of uh, security concerns. And since everything moves in the form of packets these days, so why not video? So video has been transfer transformed from connecting wires and electrical impulses to converting into packets and, and moving on wireless. Uh, it's, it's basically the same technology. We now have a convergence of voice data, video, and it's being applied now towards uh, security and monitoring. Uh, I think uh, I'll start out with playing about a one minute video of one of the partners here upon the completion of the uh, California Department of Transportation Security Surveillance. This is DC 7866. As is setting up a network of high quality surveillance systems to monitor terrorist threats to Bay Area bridges and tunnels, we wanted to show people both that Homeland Security can benefit from a wireless system that's fast and easy to install. It is essential. Wonderful and possibly an over by wireless technology. The highway patrol is already monitoring Bay Area freeways to spot and alert drivers to backups and other traffic problems. But Caltrans' new system is considerably more advanced than this traffic cam. It's on base for Bay Area security where the cameras are or how sharp the images are. But the network of 250 and it's very, very high level reliability and wireless. That's exactly what we're doing. This point-to-point -point wireless system is far more secure than Wi-Fi, the mobile wireless network found in malls, airports, and coffee shops. High-performance wireless can be deployed faster and cheaper than stringing cables, making these new systems hacker-proof in the top priority of South Bay Congressman Mike Honda, who's on the House Wireless Task Force. We have the capabilities to protect our cyber system, our cyber space, uh, but we have to put the money in it. Yeah, that's, that's the part. That's our next step. We have to infuse the money to make sure that the wireless system or the cyber system that we have in place to protect ourselves Caltrans wireless surveillance is expected to become a national bomb. So Caltrans absolutely. Later in the year, a similar system is already in use at Fort Sam Houston in Texas. Parsa thinks this wireless technology also has applications for air. Okay. I think it's just tell me. Deployments in the United States of the of the technology. Now, our purpose today is applying the same technology to the protection of the uh, of natural infrastructure, particularly the national oil pipelines and essentially all the petroleum infrastructure that exists, refineries, oil wells, terminals, and so on. Um, that's the outline. I'll try and zip through some of these but it's important that we establish where we are, what's the background for this. And uh, since I'm not sure about the level of technology um, of everybody here, 
the presentation might have more generality than is good for some and more terminology than it is good for others. But there's a handout and my number is there, so you can always refer to my contact me anytime. Questions now. The objective of this presentation is to, to, to employ an integrated system of sensors and other emerging technologies for the protection of national assets and infrastructure, particularly the infrastructure and fire system. First, today, the focus is on petroleum infrastructure. As I mentioned earlier, in the last two years, there's been a uh, a great deal of concern about protecting, particularly the oil pipelines, the energy pipelines in the US. As a matter of comparison, there's 200,000 miles of pipeline in the US, oil, and 95,000 miles of product, gasoline, and so on. Protecting these has been the major concern and focus of uh, the Department of Transportation uh, and the Department of Homeland Security. So it's very serious. Comparatively, um, Cross Nigeria and another aspect, there was a, a report in the paper in January that Nigeria lost 30 billion naira worth of just oil um, last year. That does not include other aspects of the economy. So. The next question is the, uh, is the problem statement. And I like to focus, you're all familiar with all this, so I like to focus on the last two. On the, this one and this one. Right now, I don't think there is a, any surveillance system, any monitoring system, any section of the pipelines. And uh, in the United States, there's monitoring of every square foot, every foot of pipelines in the US. Another thing is, Domestically, that runs into um, billions of naira a year. This is a black hole. So we're not only losing the oil, we're losing products to uh, the Just as an introduction, I put this on up here. In this system, you can sit at your desk and monitor every single foot of pipeline, every oil well, every floor of the refinery, essentially all our petroleum assets will be monitored from your desktop, from that one over there. Uh, when we say that there's so much free access, we start being concerned. That means anybody can have access to it. There's a lot of encryption encryption and protection that goes to to make sure that nobody intercepts the information that's being sent. This page is the operation sum, uh, summary. As it is now, if there is an incident, somebody has to find it. When somebody detects it, he notifies the security person, the military, that something is going on there, but it's usually after the fact. Long after the perpetrators are gone. Well, in this deployment, in this technology, the moment somebody works, works near that pipeline that should not be there, at the, at the network operating center, whether it's here or in Portacos or Lagos, it lights up on the screen that there is something there. Camera zooms in, takes a picture, and the information is transmitted in a matter of seconds, talking about here, to whatever sub networks that exist, including the out you see has a has voice. You can talk into it. So the same technology that sends video, sends the sensors that are unless you that there is somebody there. So it also sends communication. And of course, down to apprehension. Once in a while you hear a lot of people have been rounded up and put in jail. But 
it's not, I don't think it's a very accurate system because there are always innocent people involved, but there is no choice about it. In this case, even if the activity is in the dark, pitch black, a mile away, the person's photograph is being taken and recorded and transmitted. So there is zero chance that anybody who wasn't there is going to get picked up. Okay. Now, I, I think, and, and you'll forgive me if, if it is too general, but let me mention a little bit about IP camera, because that's basically the, the, the structure that we have up here. Everybody here has a cell phone. Well, oh, almost everybody has a cell phone. <laughs> But uh, I think your computer is networked, so you can send email to anybody in the world. You have to have a, an email address. Oh. Uh, they have network addresses, internet addresses. And this one here, for example, if you happen to log onto here on the internet, you will see a camera in Houston right now, taking pictures of traffic as well. I didn't have to be here, you could, could be in China to still watch the same, <coughs> the same camera So you can imagine what happens if you're sitting here and uh, any place, there's a camera of that nature somewhere along the pipeline network. You see, see, it's no major thing about it, it's just there. Ah, and all this comes with a price. You have to have, which is why it is very pertinent and very appropriate that I make this presentation to this department. You have to have a very good telecommunications network. In short, you have to have internet access. It's not as difficult as it is. I'm sure it's, you have a pretty good system, and later on we'll see just how much what augmentation you need to make to that system, even, and I'll ask you uh, what your plans are and so on. But basically, that's it. You need an uh, integrated, integrated telecom system. However, <coughs> fortunately, so you don't have to worry about going to lay fibers or anything of that nature yet. The system that we have here comes with very high capacity um, wireless radio. Okay, now this is where the question starts. Please correct me if what I have here is, is incorrect. But this is why I assume there isn't any surveillance system here on the pipeline. There is. There is? There is. There is. Okay, I'm sorry. No, the, we, the surveillance system we have okay. is uh, it's, uh, Okada. To use the local parts. <laughs> <laughs> you move from point to point on Okara. Okay, so the human. So, we technical video surveillance system. Well, quick, in five. But I also think. That uh, deployment is not continuous, is it? There are some. Okay. And you also have some microwave patients. But they, I think they cover areas that are not connected to fiber. That's correct. Now, so that's the start of one thing I left off here was the satellite. The satellite, I didn't know where to put it. Okay. Backup or primary systems. But we don't know the satellite acts as a backup system. Now, please correct me, I, I don't have any information on this, but I'm not sure how old they are and what the bandwidth is. Um, but knowing satellite systems, uh, even trying to send internet access the internet is very temperamental. So I assume it probably is not more than that. 128 or 64 or even 32 if you're the same. About that. About that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. At this rate, it's completely unsuitable for uh, motion video 
transmission. At best, the best you can hope for is still video. That is, you can just send one snapshot. Okay. All right. Now, redundant systems. Um, redundant systems is if your primary and secondary system fail, what you have to fall back on. I don't think that there's any redundancy. And uh, SCADA, SCADA systems are very, are very flexible. I mean, you can put a lot of things on it, but I think you only have it on the dash pipelines and not on the oil pipelines. Uh, later on, we, uh, I'll ask maybe you tell me what you upgrade, but because you definitely need to upgrade your, your system. Uh, in the case of the US, yes. I believe it's the US we're talking about. Yes. What do you have as a redundancy system? Okay, uh, there are actually three systems. For fully functional, for fully operational systems, the Alaska pipeline. There's a lot of fiber. But some, some of those places are so isolated, it just doesn't make sense to have fiber. So you, you report, you assume we uh, resort to radio. So it's actually very good. Later on, you see the quality of radio we have in that but that's it. One of the prime, one of the partners was involved in starting those uh, in the last five minutes. And the backup system is usually radio. Then some of the companies have uh, satellite. Because you can do a lot of things with satellite, even though you can't transmit video. And you can play around with video a little bit, but it's, it's not a problem. You can send your sensor data, other forms of data through the satellite. But now we are asking about the um, redundancy system. This system can use your cell phone signals, your cell signals to send information. That is, uh, let's take Nigeria for instance. If your if your fiber fails and there's a hammer down and you cannot use your radio because of line of sight requirement, you can always use your cell signals uh, through through the system. So essentially, at all times, you have eyes. Okay. I hope that answers your question. Okay. Um, I won't spend a lot of time on this. This just describes legacy means what usually happens in the past or in what is currently going on. In Abuja and most places, surveillance by analog CCTV to a secret generation. Okay. It's actually almost all parts of Nigeria. That's in the US most for that matter. You really don't have a lot of recording capabilities. I mean, you can watch, but you can't record. Okay. And uh, there's no remote sensing. And since there's a lot of reliance on fiber, the surveillance system itself is as vulnerable as the infrastructure is meant to protect. And let's see what we have here. I mentioned uh, the fundamentals of the technology. Mentioned this that isolated IP cameras can be monitored and controlled from thousands of pipes. So let me let me stress this again. If somebody goes to dump jump into your oil well in the middle of the forest, you can see it from which that sounds sophisticated. It is. Well, it didn't have to be from a bridge. You can see it from wherever you are in the network. See it from the US if you want it. You had access to the system. And it costs, it's a lot of memory requirements for, the, for recording this. Ha, we lock that again. You can now have terabytes um, memory capacity for a fraction of what megabyte used to cost like five years ago. Terabyte is maybe 12 bytes. 
So technology has driven prices down significantly. And also, to add to that, it's essentially limitless because you can have, um, how many people know what jukeboxes are? Okay, this is a jukebox. Those things that have CDs or records on them. Okay. You can have DVD jukeboxes set up at your control center or taking pictures of them. Let me say that again. If you only have certain portions of the person's face, let's say leaves cover part of his face and nose and so on, you can reproduce his face close enough so there will be no doubt who he was. Yeah, don't go yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, and yes, yes. The composite hands of the person, the person, the person, the person, the person. Yes. And the next question. The camera is bullet proof, explosion proof, and so on. You yes, those are the edges. Yes. You see the dark oh, from a mile away. Dark means dark from a mile away. Okay. And. Okay, this is supposed to be because supposing somebody's in the bush and is driving back and forth. But it's most of it the sleeves and everything. Okay. There's a facial reproduction technology that will produce his face. There are identical twins. Now, yes. in the case of the pipeline, yes. we have hundreds of kilometers of pipeline. Yes. How do you place these cameras? If I'm going to vandalize the pipeline, yes. I'd rather take the camera away, and you won't be able to get even the sketches of my face. Okay. Later on, uh, there's a section on, on camera, but the question has come, so let me answer So when I go there, I can tell you. If a person can't identify that as a camera, you will not know that's a camera. I think it's pretty well camouflaged to look like anything, for one thing. Secondly, um, most people will not know, I'll tell you all here, most people will not know that if you spray uh, black paint on the lens, it kills that camera. However, that camera will tell you in Abuja, hey, I am dead. Somebody is interfered with me. So you can send somebody down within the hour, whatever time it takes, pull that out, fix it. Yes. No, we're looking at. You don't know how your cameras look like. Yes. Camouflaging the cameras. Then, what is the distance from camera to camera? Or each camera? will transmit information to the center. Um, the camera can transmit is, is, is an antenna. The camera can transmit an antenna or the radio by where the camera is. That's why it will displace it. Yeah, because what we're talking about now, if we're going to our pipeline, where we have the soil, we're talking about you're going to the dark forest, the yeah. real mangrove forest. Yeah. And uh, how do you get these things, in, these things installed? And uh, how do they get the information to the center, the collecting center, okay. to be monitored? Yeah. Uh, it's later on that these questions are very good. Later on, we're going to have the system architecture, but I should answer this again. It makes it a lot easier. Um, there are different kinds of we have different kinds of radio transmissions. Usually when you, when you talk about radio, you have your, your line of your antenna and then you put it. So, okay, um, I have that outside. Okay. Some of these radios have the algorithms that are near line of sight technology that you don't have to be, you don't have to line the antennas up right. So they have the same antennas for it to work. However, you have to, in, your design, in, a, in a design of the system, you have to determine how far apart they need to be. Just a matter of camera density, I think. They need to be a mile apart and so on, instead of some of them being 60 miles apart. 
But the person took the system is that we are facing decisions. Okay. Yes, <laughs> I have more questions. I'm interested to see that picture. Mm. So I have to know the mode of transmission and then. Centigrade, but 
30 degrees centigrade. Uh, your design takes that into consideration. In Houston, yeah. in Texas, you have uh, temperatures of uh, 100 and something. Because before you sell anything in the US, you're supposed to test this thing out before you grab it. Otherwise, you'll be out. They do describe it pretty well. And uh, this bridge here is a replacement for a uh, backup for this line here. And uh, again, this is uh, 12 to 620 meters per second. It's quite cheap. Uh, I'm not going to read through them, but you can read through the actualization. Um, these are some of the offerings you have. Again, uh, there's something that if you had to extend your fiber, let's say you have certain locations between certain cities that you don't have fiber, you'd like to have, but there's not enough money yet to string the fiber. If you want to string fiber in the first place, considering the cost, um, you can use our radios quite well as a, as a backup to the backup. They're quite a lot cheaper and they're quite a lot easier to deploy. It could be deployed in weeks. And you know how long it takes to trench fiber and lay. What's the length of the radius? Excuse me? The length of those radius. Um, it's a major company. Major? Yes. But I'm not sure I can give the name right now. What's the distance? Distance could be up to 60 miles for the long range. Uh, what frequency? Um, okay, I can give you 5.8, but you can tune in your frequency, but the traditional use is 5.8 kilohertz. Yes, please. Uh, sorry, I'm not sure. Is it really a point to point or point to point to point? No, 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 point to point. Yeah, you have point to point. So what frequency do you really operate? For which one? For the radio system, the point to point. Or what frequency is that? I have to take them out of here. Where is 548? Are they micro radios? That's the case. They are all frequencies. somebody takes picture through two leaves, through vegetation. We discussed this at length uh, already, but let me also re-emphasize that we could monitor the system from the US if you want us to, I don't know why you want us to, but for any for any reason you want us to monitor your pipeline from the US as a backup system. You want it. And we discuss this, we discuss this. Uh, this is this is important to the guys who protect, who have to do the protection of the application. They have to be able to get the same information that you get on your desktop or the uh, network operating center. They have to get it on the ships and the helicopters, or whatever the case may be and they can receive that through the same technology that sends it to you. To so your camera by chance interferes with the satellite, doesn't do you uh, monitoring. 
at such long distances? I mean, to, I mean, to interact or to interfere. I said, does it um, interface with satellites in the form of satellites? Because yes, it can monitor from US, it can monitor from there. By what kind of does it interface with satellites? Okay. Uh, it's, the reason you can monitor from the US is because you can, it's, it's, it's IP protocol. Internet, uh, internet, 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 internet. Wait, where is the camera connected to? Okay. Um, to be connected here? To what? To what? To what use of that? Okay. Then the signal gets sent to wireless, to, to Ethernet, bridge, or whatever it is, that the, to, to the wireless radio network. And the network goes to the uh, internet. So it essentially works with internet. <laughs> So that any other internet device. What's the, what's the distance? I mean, oh, there is no distance. There's no distance. Yeah. The signal can be to any internet at any distance. Mm -hmm. As long as you get, get there and access the internet, you can see for anyone. Anyway. We are wondering then why the Maladin is still elusive. Why is <laughs> Why the Maladin is still elusive? Um, uh, because they don't know where it is. You have to be able to locate it. If they plan, if they mount the camera and happen to walk by, there's no way it's, that the camera has to be there. Okay. So, I'm kind of trying to close up. But we can go to go This is a schematic representation of the project that we have. The system. Uh, we have audio channels. This light here is because an alarm. And uh, yeah, sensors, many sensors, vibrational sensors, with sensors, and, uh, with cameras, with mics, and so on. All this go to do a system. And the ash sign here you get the IP access, internet access. And you can watch it anyway. San Diego, Hawaii, Nigeria. Yes. Are those specimens of the type of cameras you want to deploy? Oh, that's the same. Picture. And there are some different cameras. Yeah, what I'm saying is that if you look at the terrain of our pipeline yes. and uh, the pipeline network mm. in this country, I have been really wondering how you can deploy such a camera and it will be looking very safe. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, don't, don't pay much attention to this particular oh, okay. representation. It are cameras that look like sweet boxes. Um, the cameras that look like poles, nothing to it. Just the, the, the enclosure of the camera is something for engineers to, to focus on. Could be like a light pole, could be. Anyway. So, <laughs> so as long as the detection is I think we're still wondering how uh, the minimum distance between a pump station and uh, even though we have the uh, marker posts uh, within variable distances, the real uh, saboteurs pull down the marker posts. So, Unless your 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 radios, somebody, somebody pulls down the microphone. Most of the problem, remember, most of the losses that you have is really not that there's been a punch in your pipeline or somebody vandalizes. It's the length of time that it takes to detect that something is happening. And the deterrence, somebody in this right now, they will get away with it. anybody get away with anything. However, if there's a deterrence, somebody knows if I do this. Next tomorrow, somebody's going to come to my house and pick me up. That's a serious deterrence. However, more importantly, the moment that happens, 
Somebody tries to take out a camera, you know. Somebody's trying to take out to do something to the system. To send somebody down, they send the helicopter down, they send the Air Force, whatever the case may be. Right. It's a matter of minutes. Okay. And uh, We'll be done with a of factors. So what's the strategy? Anything we discuss here is preliminary. Right? After the sit down, there's a scope of work defined and we can actually work with the things for public terms. But the strategy, from my perspective, is to use existing infrastructure where possible. You are you have a lot of satellite stations. You can use it for videos. You can use it for sensors, and you can use it for mapping. Because the first thing you need to do, battery system, is to provide an electronic mapping of the network so that it can be pulled up anywhere. There's, there's a software program that does that. Okay. And since the, the pipeline traverses a lot of different geographical areas, from the swamps, the savannah object. The first strategy is to divide that into geographical segments and then treat them separately, independently. We're going to do a lot of details later on this, but that's, that's, that's what we should be done. And have to put a lot of work into the network design. Uh, what's, how, how many cameras go into one local access? No. So, how many nodes do you want to put into one? Uh, what hub, regional hub, and so on. Because it's from these regional hubs that you, that you send through the big pipe to where it is. Right. Uh, what I like to since the terrain varies so much, from one end to the other. It has to be custom. Yeah? Like going back to the geographical segmentation that I was talking about, yeah, everything has to be custom. This area, this field, this is how many cameras and how many radios I need, at this distance, and so on. This is how many point to multi point system I need to have, and so on. So, and I mentioned earlier, I'm using your satellite for data uh, transmission. This is, a, this is a topic I'm sure all of you are very familiar with, so I'm not going to get along with this part. But it's not easy. Uh, the mangrove regions are particularly demanding. But I also notice that you have radios deployed there already. So even though your radios might, might come from different manufacturers and so on different properties, the, the infrastructure for the deploying the, for deploying those radios are already there. So there is that experience in doing it. So wherever possible, we would use your towers and so on, if not light poles, um, or the structures. Um, okay. We're almost done. Now, one thing I've noticed about Nigeria, we're all Nigerians here, is that foreigners will come bring very fancy equipment and uh, install them, turn key, and turn them loose. Six months later, the shot. You have to go around looking, getting them replaced, fixed, repaired. Well, only the foreigners can fix them, usually. Not here. I might be an American citizen, owning an American company, but I was born in New York. I'm in Nigeria. They through the same problems and pieces me up regularly. So in this strategy, with a lot of extensive training, you have to be trained. Everybody, everybody involved in here will be trained in Nigeria and in the US. There's just no point bringing foreigners here to fix things when you can fix them yourself. 
and uh, to, mention, to mention things. Again, usually the, um, you buy things because they look nice and they work very well at the time. But what happens, somebody forgot to tell you that it's getting obsolete, you need to upgrade, you need to get rid of those things. Not here. Frequently, whenever there's an upgrade, you can access it, there'd be a website. So any engineer could send that information to us and say, well, you can access it and find, find out about the upgrade yourself. And more importantly, you can send information to us and say, well, this unit is having this kind of problem. And you say, well, this is a patch, or this is a fix. I'm going to replace it for you for free. Or any of those things. That you will never be caught um, by surprise, but you'll never be stranded with that system. This is Maintain the pipelines, I'll not mention this one. I mean, you don't do PM on pipelines. This is telecom, so I'll not mention it. But it's not any less important. And there's a whole area we have gone into, but that's not the area. But what is usually done with pipelines? Constant monitoring, sending robots through the pipeline system, measuring what the thicknesses are, where the where the road, uh, where the where the eroded, corroded parts of the pipes are, where it's likely to break before it happens. Any of these things that usually should be done, and whether they're done or they're not done, that's not your area. But. Okay. We've come to the end of the presentation. So, what are our future plans? Here? Well, before I came here, there was something I wanted to do. I wanted to step, I wanted to use this equipment here and have you watch any part of the book or maybe Legos. Unfortunately, the um, the manufacturer only certified it, it's only certified the USGSM for 850 megahertz. And we run 900 megahertz. So that was not possible to do that. And he told me a few uh, last Thursday that it's going to testing, and uh, within three weeks that will be possible. So when I come back here, and I'll be able to show that to you. So you'll be able to see in the camera a picture from wherever you want to put the camera at. And as it acts as a cell phone. So wherever you can call a cell phone, you can call it. What I'm trying to point out here is. Again, reflects the technology that we have. You can look at an isolated oil well if that's what interests you. can look at an isolated platform that's what interests you on, on your palm, on your PDA. Okay. This is something of the heart. Uh, I should mention this. Some of the part of the reason that we have this vandalism is I might be wrong. But it's nothing new. It happens in Iraq, happens in Thailand, wherever there is oil. For some reason God has arranged it that the people who have oil, that oil should have been in less developed areas. That's the way it is. Okay. So the people who have the land and so on feel left out. Well, each of our base, base units has 6,000, uh, a capacity of 6,000 sub subscriber units. So what are you going to do with all that capacity? It's lying there wasted, not used. To give telephone and internet service to the villages that the pipeline passes through. All of a sudden, there's development. People feel they're getting from something from the pipeline going through their territory, and they have a sense of community belonging and ownership. Again, it doesn't cost anything. More or less. Technology is there, the capacity is there. Uh, that's it, a hard one. Yes.
No, not smart stairs, it's slight. Oh, sorry. We're talking about uh, how about this? How about you? Um, let's take us back to a place like uh, Bielsa. Maybe. Okay, for the subscribers, be able to call into the network or just within the locality. Oh, yes, you said that the point is a point to multiply the system. So you said, uh, when I go count, you said the point to multiply the system. I don't know how far I have to say it. I don't know how far I have to say it. Uh oh, okay, so I'm getting by uh, back as a mixture of the values. Okay. Oh, you know, go out, point to point, you know, go out. So, yes. Now, what we're saying, we're talking about social responsibility yes. of the country. Yes. To the locality. Yes. Now, you connect this to the people. Who pays for the usage of this? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's the people are poor. <laughs> the people are poor. I know that. But, um, it's, you still, you bought the system. I mean, the system is they're using the system to transmit your video yeah. and voice and so on, data and sensor information and so on. So, the, the capital expenditure has been made. Okay. Access to the system is like $100 per subscriber unit or something for a customer thing, somebody's house. Okay. I don't know. And then it's not like set like set like you have to pay like nine thousand dollars per per E1, the two megabit, something like that. Or maybe more in Nigeria. And you're not paying for bandwidth on the main. It's already paid for. Yeah. yeah because the subscribers will have to pass through other people's switches. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who pays the uh, access? No, I really want to go there. If you, if you wanted to discuss this at length, you could make tons of money. LNBC could make enough money to pay for its investments. As you, as you very well know, the state of telecom backbone in Nigeria is really poor. You need to look at MTN. MTN backbone map. I think this is on his website or something. And then look at NNPC system. I'm sure, at least where you deliver services. I mean, you'll sit down and scratch yourself. You're making tons of money. Just selling access to the server. Yeah, in, in, in that case, <laughs> you can, you can, that could be a selling point. Yeah. Uh, we used to say that, uh, management used to say that uh, NNPC, core business of NNPC is not the uh, telecommunication. Oh. But that point now yeah. can be a selling point to a system. Do you when NMPC could still make yeah. Duke money. Energy makes tons of money. Duke Energy it makes forty percent of its revenue from telecom. I don't wear it up on the system set up. Just like so NMPC can make forty not just oil. And if I might tell you, Nepal is trying to do the same thing. And uh, of course, I'm not sure how my tell is, but my tell is, that's his core business. So if Nepal is trying to do the same thing, I'm sure NNPC with already established telecom infrastructure will be a lot more. Uh, how can this be integrated with our existing system? You seem to know our system very well already. <laughs> <laughs> How can this be integrated to the existing system? Okay, I'll get back to you on that. It might sound like it, but I don't know that much. What I was hoping to do was ask more detailed questions. You know, when I was trying to ask him, is this correct? Is this so and so on? Um, if I had a more detail about your system, then I can sit down overnight and so on and write up something better. But just off the top, from basically what I know is this. Uh, from the years I've known earlier on in the discussion. Okay, first, you have a, a very substantial satellite system. You can use that for video. You can have to see what I do. What can you do? Really, that. But you can still use that as 
expect to use that satellite system layer for the mapping. You need to have an accurate mapping of your pattern. But remember, when this thing happens, let's say somebody strolls into the right of way and sets up a sensor. He sets the alarm kicks on. The way the alarm will be displayed will be on the screen with the map. Okay. The map shows up there. And one spot will start alarming. Beep, 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 beep. So you click, double click on that point on the map. And it brings up a larger window and shows, oh, this is happening on Ugeli or whatever. Place and this is the uh, geographical coordinates. So all that comes, the basic foundation for that is you have to have a very accurate map on the system. And that comes from the server that. It's one thing. Secondly, um, I know very little about your radio, um, but I'm not sure how many of those you can still use. I mean, you could use it, yes. But the, the infrastructure, the towers and everything is there. Okay. And we have a whole range of these cameras and some radios, a whole range of radios from point to point. To Double capacity that Niger does give them. Even the SAT 3 on the CK. That's an information. 622. I saw a tribute area that was 960 megabit per second transmission. That is extremely huge. Okay. So, and they don't cost a fortune. It costs, I don't know, and this part I want to check what the actual cost is. But it's not a huge fortune. So you can just, it's a matter of take down this radio, put this radio on the mat, set it up, and use it. Um, your pipe, your fiber can still, fiber is going to do a lot of things with fiber. So they're still going to be there as a primary system where it exists. Where it doesn't exist, there's a uh, fiber replacement. This is essentially point to point. It's still between two locations. So there's, I mean, there's a lot. We have a very rich system that we can need to get into. My problem is that um, our system is mainly European uh, based. We are not the European standard. If we have to integrate your American system, you know, there have to be a lot of uh, <laughs> interfacing problems. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that at all. Um, we have a lot of our radios also used in Europe. So, another part of the world. Or do you have a uh, new manufacturer for Europe? Oh, yes. I mean, anybody wants to be in business has to be able to manufacture for every part of the world. Yeah. And internet is internet is internet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. Um, the last page kind of tells you some of our customers. And uh, in fact, it's Well, that's my address, lot of contents. Like I said before, a lot of the work will be done by Nigerians and can be trained here in the US. Uh, okay. Again, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. 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 Thank Yeah, we have uh, 20,000 kilometers of uh, pipeline. Yeah. And uh, what we're saying that maybe after certain kilometers, I don't know how many kilometers, we'll have a camera, yeah. maybe to attach with a radio. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Uh, camera. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Now, uh, I'm just wondering, like say for example, if you take uh, 10 kilometers, okay. how many cameras do you think it is okay. It's different from that's right. Depending on the geographical segments. In Abuja, um, going to the north, it really doesn't matter because you can have you can have you can choose to have a fixed focus. Uh, you can have some fixed focus cameras. That is, nothing is going to happen really there, so you don't really care about zooming in and layers really. So you mount one camera every three or four miles or so. 
and it monitors that and so on. Now, uh, if something happens, it's going to do some adjustments. In the, in the delta area, okay, you can choose more, I mean, more complicated cameras. Uh, and uh, some uh, PTZ, something that can pan, tilt, zoom, and so on. That gives you a mile if you have that much distance. Or again, if it's a heavily forested area, you're going to have, you know, your decision is going, it's going to be decided by, by the terrain. Uh, by the terrain. Yeah. Well then, uh, attention then will turn into the scrutiny of the camera and the radio system. Excuse me. Then our attention will now focus on the security of the camera itself. The security? Yeah. Because it's, it's an equipment that <laughs> to be mounted there, you know, <laughs> together with the radio system, you know. Okay. So. Unfortunately, I didn't bring a whole lot of cameras. You don't want to run a Yeah. The deployment depends. It's very variable in terms of deployment. But it's it could be it could be like a pole, it could be on a mast, could be like it does, that the camera doesn't exist. Okay, let me see. Um, let's say you have a small pole like this, and the top of that pole looks painted, just like a regular pole. But what you don't know is that somewhere in that pole is a camera. And, and I'm sure along the road you have some utility boxes and so on. It look like I, I can bring you brochures to look at. But it's not one type of equipment. Believe me, we thought this looks I've got this is good. But I'm good here. Yes, please. Yeah, we see that. Yeah. Well, there, there are two there are two areas I'm really worried about. Okay. The first one is uh, where he has not specified. The pipeline right of way in America, or wherever it's being used, is, is very different from the type we have there. Here, a lot of people pass through the right of way. We have cattle bearers who just pass and they see the camera and they think it's uh, going to harm their cow and get it done, as if they're cutting our cable. Then we have a frequency problem. You mentioned about two point, uh, around two point five uh, gigahertz. Uh, all those, all those areas are uh, they, they are like uh, a, a very confused market in Nigeria because there are a lot of pirates, frequency pirates, operating oh. in this country. Oh. Okay. Even some equipments are being sold in this country by just testing with uh, a spectrum analyzer to know whether that spectrum is free in that area for the day. Yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, let me take the frequency one first. That's, that's probably the point. I'm going to address the, uh, the camera and the camera frequency. Last year, I went to get a frequency license from NCC. And I wanted 2.4 gigahertz. I said, no, there's too much interference. They don't give that, they don't give that frequency. Well, believe it or not, some of these radios is 2.4, and believe me, it's more crowded in the U.S. than it is here. Let my word for it. So there's a lot of anti-interference algorithms that's been going in into this. It's a very sophisticated system. Okay. So that takes care of the frequency. It'd be a long time before Nigeria gets as crowded as the U.S. It's very long time. Okay. So that's it. And uh, the security of the cameras, we go out and show. Um, it's pretty simple. I mean, it's, the deployment could be on a pole, electric pole, you could set up your own system. It, it could be custom. Right? But again, it's a matter of deterrence. Again. Now, somebody can go and bang on it and get away with it, cut some moves off. When this happens, the moment somebody goes there, gets near to the camera, this picture is being taken. So even if it's a car on the right, right, you end up in this village, you show up, what were you doing here? This is you. Word spreads, and if you touch this thing, by some reason, by some way, nobody will be able to figure you out, they'll come to your house and pick you up. A lot of details. Okay. Now, we see that um, 
in the list of the current users. You have the US Air Force, the US Navy, the US Army, yeah. and so on and so forth. Yeah. Apart from the Department of Transportation, uh, we know that the Department of Transportation in the US work hand in hand with the police. The U.S. Department of Agriculture, perhaps too, works hand in hand with the police. What are the issue of patents? Patents? Yes. Oh. We see that uh, it's mainly employed in the military and the paramilitary. Oh, no, I just stood here because I decided that we had two partners. The one we saw in the video also is Chevron is a person. The last page that has pictures and Stuff in there. Major uh, is not it is the company that actually owns the product, owns the patent, and sells it to anybody else. The US government doesn't own patents. And they can buy as any other customer. See, that's the difference between the US and a uh, lot of other countries. Everything is private in the US. Even when the company, even when the government spends billions of dollars to develop a drug. And, and sells it, and the drug company sells it. The drug company sells it for profit. Doesn't give it away. I mean, that's just the way it is. Everything is private. Every single bullet that's fired is made by a private company. And it could be sold any way they want to make money. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, on behalf of the GM, we want to thank the Travis Telecommunications uh, Limited for the beautiful demonstration. I believe that uh, you make a copy of uh, your presentation available to, to us officially so we can yes. get this to as is on to the department. Uh, we'll get to you as we study it, see how this will be applicable uh, to our system. Then uh, from then on we'll come to you. But we wish you could do that. We have, uh, this department has the telecommunication system. But uh, the issue of monitoring the pipeline is actually that of the games. Uh, maybe uh, if you get in contact with the games, uh, be able to work hand in hand with us to realize this uh, project. We know that uh, we lose billions. Capitalism, sabotage, professional pipeline, and all that. Because apart from their cost and restoration of the uh, pipeline or people and so on, they also lose a lot in terms of the loss of revenue and all the other and the uh, pollution. It's very important to the country from the way you presented it. And uh, it might be of interest. We don't know how soon. The government will react to this. We will do all we can to uh, see it move. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I mean, if, that, if I could have uh, um, the, 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 the